Buff, everybody feel okay? Your vocals exercised? Feeling this funny? We got to talk about daylight savings time. I feel crazy. Mm -hmm. Good, because I'm going to take your jokes for tomorrow. So let's go. And you're off. <laughs> I love Cindy Kimmings because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so I was like, I had to play your song. Too funny, Mama. What's with the grin? Hi, everyone, and welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Kim Whitley. And I am Sherry Shepard. <laughs> well, people can tell we are tired. When I tell y'all, being a mama and working ain't no joke. It's so it's funny, girl. No, keep what? going. No, I have nothing. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Jeffrey comes in. He's like, um, Mom, I'm going to bed. Why are you doing this so late? And I said, you know, it's five o'clock or six o'clock in LA, Jeffrey. So it's not late for for Kim. But when I tell you, I literally was in my pajamas. And when you said we could do this, I took my pajamas off, threw a dress on, and went and put makeup on. <laughs> I got out of bed. Wow, that is commitment. Because you I wear three hours ahead of you. Hmm? You look beautiful though. I'm going to say thank you, even though I disagree. <laughs> no, you look cute. Your show is getting really good. I mean, it's good, but it's really getting like you're coming into your own. I'm watching it. I was like, this old seasoned heifer. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't like those white pants. I mean, they were okay. Oh, but... the diaper pants? The little, uh, the little parachute pants with method yes. masks? I mean, it was cute, but they weren't cute. Like, I was like, okay, they're cute. I don't know. You know, it's very interesting. Willie Sinclair the third, the, my stylist, mm -hmm. he wants to, you know me, I like dresses. I like my legs. Uh, he likes to try all of these different things. And so I go with it to see what works, okay. what does. I don't particularly like pants, um, but he's like, you've got to show more than just dresses. So I go, okay. Now that they one, good. I, they look good sitting down. Love them sitting down. The stand up, yeah, that stand up, and all white. I look thick as I'll get up, but I was just so happy that I was dressed like Method Man. You couldn't tell yes. me nothing. That was true. That was true. <laughs> when I tell you, I was like, oh my gosh, you were dressed like he is going to get a lot of ratings. He got, um, you know, Method Man. I was just so excited. He told me he would come on, and he kept his word. And when oh, I tell you. He, he's so sweet. He's got the best sense of humor. He did a TikTok with me that literally got two or 300,000 views. This TikTok of me acting like Mary J. Blige. Cause you know, he won a Grammy for You're All I Need with Mary mm -hmm. J. Blige. So he oh, yeah, was, I was watching that a little bit. Yeah, yeah so I was, I, was, I was nervous. Cause I was like a lot of rappers, you know they don't want to play around like that unless they know you. So I was like, I don't know if he could. Edie, my assistant thought of that idea. Um, Wait, first of all, you got TikTok? The show has TikTok. You know, I don't do TikTok. I was going to say. The social media team does. But they want to do this TikTok, and they give me a really bad idea. Well, I don't want to say bad idea because uh, it's going to go public. They gave me an idea that I didn't really care for, and Edie came up with that. So I said, kudos to my assistant. She gonna, she gonna Now I'm going to have to get her a gift. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Right, right. No, I thought... I did see that, but I, I really, I got to watch it. I was in my dressing room and I usually don't get to watch you. I have to, you know, tape it or come home or you know, watch it on YouTube. And I remember I was sitting in my dressing room. And I didn't think I could watch it on my iPad. I have, you know, the app Spectrum and I happened to be in my dressing room. I was so excited to watch that. And they was knocking on my door, talking about Kim, come on, come on, Kim. You got to come to makeup. I was like, she's almost finished. You know, they were like, what? <laughs> oh, cause you got to see Jackie Fabulous. Yes, yes, I got to see it live. I was very excited. Jackie Fabulous kicked butt. She was so funny. And, um, you know, it's so clear, and we can talk about something else with this talk show, Kim. I'm hitting my groove, but I'm so clear on what the mission is God gave to me. And it literally is to make people feel better than when they came. And it is to lift them up, lift their spirits up, for an hour and make them laugh and make them feel good and inspire them and make them laugh to their sides hurt. So as long as it's in that vein, you know, I'm so good. And that laugh lounge, I had to fight for 
because they didn't executives didn't think that we should could have a laugh lounge every week with a comic and i just knew people are inundated with so many like bad things the election politics people in prison people getting murdered it's like we were not designed to take in all of this information we just weren't and it's too much and so I'm just really, really clear on what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And every time I stand behind those doors, I go, Lord, bless me to be funny. Stir up that gift of funny. And I have to say, Sherry, you're not funny, joke, joke, joke. You're just a funny person. And you got to rely on that. So yes. thank you. For that. That's oh, Jackie. That. So I'm so excited. I'm so glad that comics that we know can come on the show and and show what they do and make this audience feel better. They have not been disappointed yet. Good. So all, anybody who's new, I do want to say there's new comics, don't DM me because this is this is not a show for new comics. This is a show for comics who have been doing it a long time and they just haven't had the platform to be seen. So, cause I'm getting hit up by a lot of comics going, you know, can I just try some stuff and I want it? And it's like, that's a hard no. Right. These no, are, no, no, no. You know, the Tony Bakers, the David Arnolds, the, oh my goodness. And one day we're going to have to read some of these letters from fans, Kim, because I just happened to, we've been so busy, but I just happened to read some letters that came to us at Two Funny Mamas. And fans had a lot to say about David Arnold because a lot of our fans didn't know who David Arnold was until he came over that time. Remember with, um, from a different world. Uh, uh, what's she was in? Uh, um, Tina Turner. Dawn. Remember Angela. Dawn, Dawn Lewis. Remember when David came over with Dawn yes. Lewis? Yeah. So, uh, we were all together, and we were like, we got COVID. Remember that? We all. <laughs> girl, when I tell you, we was all together. It was Dawn Lewis, David Arnold, me, and Kim. Now I was always yeah. coming over Kim's house because Kim and I were always getting tested. So we knew yeah. we were negative so we could be over each other's house with no mask. That daggone Don Lewis and David Arnold came over and then the yeah. next week we get a phone call. I ain't gonna say from who, but they said, I got COVID. Kim called me, I was so mad. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was mad. Cause we had never gotten COVID. We had been fine cause we were only at each other's house. During that COVID. Was during the, that was during the bad time too. And we were like, what? And we were and like, Kim opened, And what did the doctor tell you? He said, well, good. You had your, your office door open. The remember I had, I had the office door open. Remember that? He was like, good, was as long as you had that office door open. Yeah, that was, because, that was. And then we had to do, remember we had to go and we had to do Sheila E's interview with us. And I was oh, so yeah. like, because you know, yeah. those questionnaires, they were so strict back then because they would say, have you been around anybody who had COVID? And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh geez, yes. And, 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 and look, did we lie? I don't, did we? I don't remember. I don't, I don't know what we did, but we said, because remember that- I'd say in a legal gonna... sense, you, there was no lying whatsoever. And Two Funny Mamas LLC right. is completely, completely, completely compli but that compliant. But person never said they had it. They said they were exposed to it. So it was another exposed situation. Right, it was an exposed That's right. situation. Yes. But girl, oh, that was the days. And so a lot of fans got introduced to David and then David came on with, with us together. We would call him on the phone. And then he came on with you. Then he came on with me and he was supposed to go on tour with us. And so I started reading some people's letters and it really affected them when he passed. And I thought, wow, to read a couple letters from the fans who immediately got exposed to David through us and just fell in love with him. It would, you know, it really touched them. So oh, um, that'd be fun, Sherry. I'll print some of those out. So the next time we will, we will it's read. So interesting. I'm I'm looking at you. I'm like, wow, success looks good on you. You look way prettier than you used to. What? Oh. Okay. What the? What? What? You see, I gotta dye my hair the gray. No, no. You look like you got money. Your face look good. 
you look all rich and successful and like you living in a sauna every day. What do you, let me get, a, get this out of my garbage. <laughs> Cause I drink, I drink water. Oh, that's right. You said you were sending me some. I did, you didn't get it? I'm a, I'm a, okay, I'm gonna follow up on my, on the Amazon. I'm gonna follow up on it. Let me say this. There's nothing that has changed, Kim. I put on makeup. I got out of bed and I put on makeup. I don't have a wig on because I just, I'm hot flashing. I need a hormonal doctor out here oh, to deal yeah. with that. I am hot flashing like they're crazy. Gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna put that pellet in you and you ain't gonna act right, so. I, whatever the progesterone cream, the estrogen cream, I'm literally, I'll be sitting there on the show and I start sweating. I don't start sweating on my face, but my whole body, the wig is too heavy. You weren't really, you weren't flashing like that when you were here. Just I am flashing now. like crazy. And so nothing has changed. I don't know what I'm looking like. I think Chris don't have the filter clear is what you're seeing. Um, <sighs> Yeah, let's take this time to apologize. That's my fault for sure. Yeah, I know that's Chris because that ain't me. Mm -hmm. Last week, this was junkie this room because I had clothes on it. <laughs> ain't nothing changed. Um, the IRS still taking the money, still paying the, the child support to the husbands. You look cute though. You Maybe funny. you're just happy that you finally have hit your dream and you ain't stressing. Like Maybe that's it. Maybe it's that's it, you know, as we get older, Kim, and we were talking about this, me and Jackie Fabulous talked yesterday for about an hour and a half about the fact that getting older is great in some ways, but also getting older, there's things that are happening to our body that we just a lot of times don't have control over. Like every day there's an ache and a pain that you don't talk about unless you with the same age. And we've talked about this stuff that is happening and um so i think that sleep i've been getting more sleep and more rest because i see now as i get older that i need my sleep in order to operate the next day to do two shows i can't be remember how we used to go to bed two three in the morning if i'm no, if i'm I, nine o'clock i'm i'm okay. trying to no, my friend Josie, who's our dialogue coach, she she used to be one of the fly girls. She sent me, she's our dialogue coach. Girl, she sent me an invitation to Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam's party. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll probably go. I said, you know, I got to do Joshua's work. Girl, I looked at the flyer. <laughs> I sent it back to her. I said, does it say it starts at 11 p.m.? What? I said, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis going to be asleep. I said, thank you. Thank you. I, I, there's no way. I was like, girl, I can't. I, there's no way. Like, I literally, I can. I'm sorry, babe. What? No, I was like, I couldn't do it. I can. I think we can do those kind of things like once every six months, once every seven months, where it's like it, it's late. And it got to be on the weekend, you know, when we know we're going to be up late. I don't think, I don't know if I could start a party at 11 o'clock. I got to get there at like eight or nine and it go to that time. Like, I think the last time we stayed out real late was my, my going away party, the skate party at your house. And even then you was dragging. <laughs> and then before that, dragging. we went out with Lisa Ray to Ronald Isley's birthday party. Struggling. And, and even then when y'all was driving me home, I was in the back sleep. I only woke up because That's see Mickey right. was drunk. Right. And she was screaming out the window. Yes. I to jump out the moving car. That's the, <laughs> otherwise I was knocked out. But uh, uh, Jennifer Hudson girl had a, a birthday party at the skating rink out here in New York. And she invited me and I said, oh, okay, I'll go. And Kim, it was the same thing. That sucker on the flyer. I got ready about eight. And I said, well, let me get the flyers so I can get the address to go to the skating rink. Because I, if I get there at 8.30, then about 10, I'm leaving. I'm Girl, leaving. why look at that flyer for Jennifer Hudson's birthday party? Look at you yawning right now. Girl, I can't stop. That, uh -huh. that party started at 11 o'clock. And I texted That's Jennifer 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. And see, Jennifer don't do her shows live. She pre-tapes them. So she was in New York 
the show about to start. And I said, Jennifer, I got to do a show tomorrow. Like I can't, I can't. And she said, well, can you just drop in? And I said, no, I can't get, it's like, I'm ready to go. It's eight o'clock. So I can get back at 10 and go to bed. Your thing don't start at 11, which means people ain't going to be there till 1130, 1140. No, I, and I couldn't go. And you know, I love to skate girl, but I couldn't go. To, girl, I'm hot. my face is sweating right now. I got to turn off the fan, but it's still loud. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Jessica, is everything okay? Oh, yeah, I was gonna, me and Sherry, me and Sherry doing the podcast, and I need to call Dad. I haven't talked to Dad in a long time, too. So Ooh. we'll be finished. Ooh. Oh, okay, tell Daddy I said hi. Sherry is on the podcast. She hot flashing, so she fanning right now. Um, I don't know when this started. She didn't do that before, huh? I know it just started. Oh, no, it, it'll, it'll come out Thursday. All right, so I'll call you back. Ooh, if I put alcohol on myself, does that cool you all? Alcohol? No, don't put alcohol on. Oh, what is this okay. this color thing on the screen? Yellow, pink. Wait good a minute. Time to, good time to uh, to pimp B flats flash racks <laughs> by Jack dot com oh. slash B flats. Oh, that's Ooh. hilarious. I got them in my thing. I, I need to go because it's right in my cabin. I'm gonna run downstairs and get the get the flash rags so I have. You, know, you ain't running down your stairs in your house. I'm gonna run downstairs. Girl, these, wait. Oh wait a minute, let me tell you something. Oh. There's Jack. Her what? show Men Applause is out on um, what streaming network is it out? Her special. It, it's it kind of everywhere. It's and, and it's out on kind of comedy comedy dynamics. Those typically go to Amazon, but you can kind of get it right. wherever. So you can watch it because she talked about menopause. Can I tell you, this hot flashing, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get in a bed with a man. Because first of all, remember how we used to like to spoon and cuddle, Kim, 20 years ago? I swear I'm hot flashing so much. I don't want no man touching me. I'm not spooning nobody. I'm not I cuddling. Want, I don't want your body heat on my body heat. None of it. None, None of, of it. it. You hear that, and Chris? I'm Noted. Chris got to do his stuff on the other side of the bed. You know what kind of bed I do? Jack? <laughs> there you go, Sherry. That feel good to say an adult joke? <laughs> You're on a podcast, not on the daytime show. Oh. Let me tell you something. You know what kind of bed I got? Because I didn't take my bed with me. I oh, gave my bed that? away to the cleaning ladies. My, Why you my gave your bed away to the cleaning lady? I gave all my bedroom furniture I with me. I asked it. you for that mattress. Heffa, you got one of them Tempur-Pedics that it took us six hours to get. Do you remember? With the light, feel, like a okay. disco. But it don't feel like you're I went with you. You, you. you sit up there and have me waiting for you in that Tempur-Pedic shop. You gonna tell them you don't want coils. So you laid on every coiled bed. And I said, Kim, you say you didn't want coil. I know, I know, but I gotta, I wanna try it. But you say you didn't want, and then you went to the Tempur-Pedic side, which is why we were in the Tempur-Pedic store and you laid on every mattress and couldn't make during the height of COVID we was in that daggone mall. You laying on every mattress and got the nerve to try to fall asleep on one of them. I was with you. So don't tell me you wanted my little mattress that I forgot was, you was with me. Yeah I, I was I wanted your bed your bed feels so good but I think your dogs have peed in it and then ex husbands in it. Yeah you're right. I should let it go. Wow. Lexi peed in the bed. I let somebody right. watch her probably Robin yeah, Montague yeah. I think and Lexi peed on the bed. And That's I took right. it, but I told my cleaners, I got it out, I had it professionally clean, but I gave all of my bedroom furniture and everything, they packed it all on the truck. When I tell you that truck, it, when it went down the driveway, Kim is like, cluck, 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 cluck. It, all my stuff was on that truck, because I gave everything away. So this time I bought a bed, uh -huh. and I bought one of them uh, beds that come up you know, that you could watch TV. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's what mine does. I bought, I bought the king, but I bought two of them. So it's like two twin mattresses. Two, mat make two twin mattresses, smart. Now, it ain't nobody to get to use that other side. But smart. let me tell you something. Smart. We ain't going to be spooning because it's the center divide in that it's mattress. A split in it, yes. It's I didn't split the split mattress, and I'm so mad my dog be up on me. Like, damn it. See, mm -hmm. I got the split one, so when I bring it up, they can lay it down. So I'm oh. telling you, I'm not playing or These hot flashes ain't no joke. I, when I went to Kat's uh, concert, 
I was hot flashing. Uh, and we was in Madison Square Garden. It was so cold and I was hot flashing and I was hot. And he went to hug me. And I was like, you can't even touch me, cat. I'm too hot. And he said, "You, yes, you are. And I went, no, not even that hot. I'm hot flashing. Because if I mean, you ever touch somebody who's having a hot flash, they literally, you could feel the heat from their body. And off I'm like, their I body. wonder why God got us. Why did we go through that? It's an interesting what is the hot flash for? I just don't understand it. I don't understand why. What is it created for? Like, why? Why? Like, what are mosquitoes for? Those are the kind of things in life I don't understand. What's the purpose? I think you should you should work on that thought. Like, dive further into that. Like, what else don't you understand? Like, oh, that's let, good. Let, let's yeah. go further on that, Kim. Let's we'll talk All about right. the mosquitoes. You know, I don't understand what mosquitoes are for. All they do is suck your blood and bite you. What? And you always get them bites on your booty. They give you them yeah. bites that you can't even reach, like on the fat right underneath your arm, on like way right down beneath your neck where you can't reach it, and in the in the under the curve of your booty. That, it's real weird I, on your ankle. Always get an ankle or on your booty bite. And what uh, are they doing? Taking the blood I, to the laboratory to find <laughs> to what? what? Don't stop, please. <laughs> Just. Keep thinking this through. <laughs> Real funny. That's what I'm talking about. I said, I hope you get COVID, you dirty bastard. Oh, that's funny. Did you say that to a mosquito? That's hilarious. I hope I get COVID all in my booty because that's what I you wonder. get. I hope. And then here's the thing with these little these little mosquitoes: you'll be asleep and you you can hear yeah. it. Here, oh, have you, have you, you ever jump up yourself? Huh? Girl, I done slapped out of myself. I hit the, I mean, pat, I'm like, ah! I have hit myself so hard in the ear. Because you hope you're going to get it, but they faster than you. They fat, they thick with blood, and you'll uh, wake up and you don't see it no more. So then you try to lay there. You try to lay there and zzz, right in your ear. Oh, It is the worst. And then you wake up with a ton of mosquito bites. Yes. That's so you like, what was this thing doing on my thigh? What was you doing by my ass? Like, how do they bite through the clothes? I'm like, what kind of through mosquitoes the are these? But oh. you know, they said in the study, they Chris, said in the study, do you know how many uh, spiders <laughs> we swallow at nighttime because our mouth is open? They said that, but I don't believe you don't have spiders in your room. Why would you yes. be swallowing spiders? You, yes, you do have spiders. You ain't never got a spider bites. At Blue Moon, I spray peppermint oil or spray all over my room. I'm not, the spiders ain't coming in my room. Oh, that's why I smell like your Auntie Emma. <laughs> all the damn peppermint they oil. Said, they said you swallow spiders, but they, I don't know if that's true. Shit. 20 in a lifetime on average. Kim, if you sleep with your mouth open and there's mosquitoes or gnats or anything, why you don't think they be getting in your mouth? Because I sleep on my side to make sure my mouth isn't open. I was going to say something real nasty. <laughs> I, to. I think we'd all appreciate if you did. <laughs> I bet you would. <laughs> I was going to say... Um, I've been listening to your Audible, and I want to thank all of our fans because a lot of our fans have been listening to the Audible. Yes. Uh, Kim, which is a sitcom for your ears. If you have not heard Kim's Audible, which was created, co-created with Kim Whitley and Lena Waite, who has uh, co-created The Shy and uh, 20s and uh, Queen and Slim, she, uh, Lena Waithe wrote this and Kim and Lena are executive producers of Kim, the audible original. And it is so funny that the sound effects are great. I listen to it when I'm, um, at my show and everybody's gone home. Cause I'm usually the last one to leave. And I just was cracking up Kim. It is so funny. David Arnold, he plays oh, no. big team. David Arnold plays the ex-boyfriend that Kim cannot get enough of, who always wants to get back with her, but he married. And he is so funny. And Jess Hilarious is the woman who had the baby, who gave the yeah. baby to you. The little boy who plays your son is funny. Carter. 
funny. Yeah. Trying to uh, recognize the voices. It is a funny, funny show. You can listen to it while you are driving, while you are working. The same way you listen to our podcast. So fans, thank you so much for making Kim the Audible one of the trending um, uh, audibles on Audible. Y'all have really, really done it. We appreciate that. They always do it, please. And go in and and rate it. It's got a a 4.9 out of 5. Right now, can they leave a comment? I'm, I'm I did. Sure. You know, I left. You can, yeah. On the review, you leave a comment. Oh. You guys, please leave comments and be as specific as possible in your comments because we need Audible to see that this is the kind of content that we mm-hmm. want so that it can be a second season. And what I am praying for is that not only it become a second season, but that it get picked up to be made into an actual sitcom because if you can picture Kim on the audible gosh what would a sitcom actually on TV a streaming site or network Mm -hmm. look like so that's what I'm praying for girl because it's funny Kim it's so funny I love it I did enjoy did you hear Andre's voice yet has he come up yet no I haven't heard Andre's Andre's the comedy club owner oh I did hear Andre's voice yes I did that's so funny. Does, did you like, is that? And then Rodney's voice. So it's, it's a lot of fun to try to pick out. I still so ain't told that other person. They, I forgot to tell. Okay. I, I, I already know. Okay, she I think they know. probably figured it out. Yeah, I think they figured it out. Because when you ain't got the call, there was somebody whose voice was in it, but they cut it out. No, no, no. Uh, it was not due to Kim. Sometimes they got to cut characters. We've all been through this in shows we've been cut out the pilot hasn't been picked up they fired us we didn't been through it and so this person did not make the cut and kim was going to tell the person that they didn't make the cut now she wondering if the, she ain't told them yet they know because you ain't called to say girl it got picked up and here's the air date just because you ain't called for that they know all you got to do is make that phone call and they go hello and you just like girl she know should i should i can i text and say it yeah, I'm. I, we all so busy. Do they it watch like, the show? No, not unless they, they go often. They. <laughs> oh. oh! <laughs> there I can't believe you'd attack Caroline Ray like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about that Caroline Ray. Yes, you can text her. We are so busy. You're not breaking up with her. It ain't like y'all not hey. sticking together. I forgot you to tell it. you. No, I'm so sorry they had to cut you out. I'm sorry I fought, but at the at the end of the day, I didn't have the final say. I have a question. Time, wouldn't it wouldn't it be Audibles or the producer? I guess maybe Kim, you are the producer in this situation. I was like, isn't it really Audibles call? Like, why would you have to tell them? No, because oh, she's friends. Gotcha. Friend. It's just a a courtesy. Yeah, a lot of the people who are doing the voices are Kim's friends, and they're all good. So she wasn't using people that were not good, but everybody just didn't make the cut. It's always hard to tell somebody that you're firing them, or they didn't get hired, uh, or you know they kind of got let go. That's hard, but it's, it, that's just life. You do not have to call. You just say, I'm sorry it didn't work out, but next time. That person knows that you always try to come, come through and hook them up with something. That I is do. the thing. Right? You always, you always try. So, all you gotta do is go, girl. Next time, hopefully we get picked up for a second season. I'm gonna bring you in for something else. Cause you will. Cause your guilt, your light skin girl guilt. Oh, Shut up. Why am I taking notes for everything that you're saying? Oh no. It, it, it's not worthy of notes. You are silly. It's it didn't work out. I'm so sorry. I didn't have the final say. But I'm gonna bring you in. If we get picked up for a second season, I'm bringing you in for another role. I, I wouldn't I say that's kind of promising. I, Something I, I she will. No, no, but it ain't a promise. Kim will do that. Okay. Final well, there you go. Say. I didn't have the final say. Okay. Kim bring on people she ain't even supposed <laughs> to just because she feel bad. Kim will bring them through that door with her. And I go, why are you bringing this person? You, everybody is supposed to come with you. Kim like, no, no, no. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah. And we'll bring, no matter, they can't even fit through the door because mm-hmm. it's not 
blessing. And Kim will squeeze them through that blessing. And then it go oh, haywire yeah. and crazy. And I feel bad. Okay, I got a question for you. You can help me with, because I got to do a talk show tomorrow. Um, you say which one? No, because it's not. By the time this is on, this will be, it'll be over. Oh, they are there. All right. Um, so tell me, this is what I've been struggling with, which is weird, because it's my show. How do you describe the Audible show, Tim? It's a sitcom for your ears. I love that. It is and literally. Uh -huh. What's it about? No, I'm just trying to get. Okay, so come for your ears. It's based partially off of your life. Uh -huh. You are you are are you a B list or a C lister? I think they got me as a D list celebrity. I don't know, it's bad. So you're 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 you're, you're a D list. So don't take what is based partially on your life. You're a D list celebrity who has had a, who has had a baby <laughs> given to you. By a woman, is she on drugs or was she just like? Uh, she was in the big sister program. Yeah, a That's woman in the saying. big, you was a big sister to somebody. She just dropped the baby off. So now you're a D-lister trying to make it in your career. You're a new mother and you're trying to get all your relationships in order. Okay. It's a comedic parody of your life if your parents weren't successful. <laughs> you the comedic parody of your life. Yeah, I like that comedic parody of your life, of my life. Yeah. And this is, and then make it short and simple. You're trying to juggle your life, a new baby, and your relationships. Oh, that was good. Because, see, I keep trying to figure out that question. My life, a new baby, and my relationships. That is so good. So glad you listened to it. And you need to maybe, and Kim, hit it, hit home on the fact that this is so much different than your regular life. You know, really, really drill down on, on the difference. <laughs> you know, you can talk about the successful relationships you have and that you cherish as compared to the character. But it's like, Kim just can't get it together, no matter how much she tries. Yeah, parody of it, my... And then you just go into it was create co-created by Lena Wade. And Lena's gonna be on the show with me on this talk oh, show. So oh, that's awesome. And then Lena's gonna and, and chime in on there. And then and then oh. who's in it? So that's it. Once you say you're just trying to juggle everything, everybody get it. Just Motherhood, so. career. Uh-huh. That was a good answer, Sherry. You said the talk show host. Sherry, I'm you got smarter now that you're a talk show host. You got what? You got smarter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, God. Kim's oh, my God. Look, look. <laughs> And, and, and it's funny because you even got the smart face. Like before you'd be like, you know, motherhood, career, you know, social life, you know, whatever, you know, blah, blah. And I'd be like, what? Now you're like this. Motherhood, <laughs> you know, your social life. Not Sherry, will you pull your glasses down just to the tip of your nose as you respond to Kim? All right, do it. There you go. <laughs> I'm not telling you. I refuse to wear these glasses on the show, and they will be having my stuff in the prompter half the time I can't read it. Be going off memory. Oh my gosh, girl! Let me tell you something that was scary. That uh, the co EP that works on the show for Nita Wynn, she's like a, an amazing sister. The first day she said it to me because when I was filling in for Wendy, I had my cards. You know, I have my cards to ask my questions of the guests and they will be on the couch and I'll be looking at my cards about to ask the next question. And she said, you're not going to use cards for these interviews anymore. Matter of fact, we're not even going to call them interviews. We're going to call them conversations or chats. We're changing the lingo. And I said, I need my cards. I've used those cards on The View. For I years. used them in Indy for years. Like I, I need the cards. And she said, she said, I've watched you at parties mingle and meet people and not once have you used cards and i wanted to say because it was a party okay and she said so you don't need cards and she said 
I'll, if you need a question, I'll put it on prompt, but I really want you to have a conversation. And I was so scared because I was so married to my cards and the questions and celebrities come on the show because they want to promote something. Don't get it twisted. They do not come on the show just so they can have a chat with you. At the end of the day, they have to promote something. You just usually get it at the end. And um, so I said, I was so nervous. And I said, you know, Sherry, challenge yourself. Step out of your comfort zone. And the first day I used it, I was so scared. But you know what? I am so glad. Because most of the celebrities go, I had so much fun with Sherry. She made it so much fun. Um, and they don't even know. I'll be like, oh, shoot. What's the next question? So wait, so you don't have your questions in the prompter anymore? They will put them in the prompter, but a lot of times Fernita will put, I know the first question I'm going to ask you, Kim, and I know the last question. And I know the most important question about what you is you want to promote. So what, where we go from there, I really try to listen. And it might bring up the next question, but Fernita will put in the prompter chat. So then I'll listen to you and maybe add something. And then if I'm going too long, she'll put on a card, prompter. She'll be writing and it'll say prompter because I'll look really quickly. Then I'll go to the prompter and there will be a question. You know, and then we then I'll go to something else. It just is a lot of fun. And I'm really glad that I stepped out of my comfort zone. And, so it is and fun now. So it is fun. It's fun, but sometimes if I don't know, it's 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 more fun if I know the person or I'm a fan. But sometimes, like, I don't know them. Um, Elizabeth Hurley. You know, I don't really know Elizabeth Hurley. I know her work, but I don't know her. So with that, it was a little bit harder because there were things she wanted to talk about. But um, and that's another it helps thing, people. right? Because it's, when there's things they want to talk about, they're on the card. So that's difficult because I'll sit there and say, girl, where you get your dress from? That ain't what she want to talk about. Yeah, you know you only got seven minutes for this guest. And seven minutes yeah. goes back very, very quickly. Dion Warwick, we had two segments with Dion, but because she, her stories went on long, there was a game we were supposed to play called Spill the Tea about all of the other divas. And we never got to it. And, um, you know, I was disappointed because it was a really great game. We'll have to play it with, with uh, Frida Payne or somebody who comes on. But... You know, you do the best. You just know you have to promote their thing because if you don't promote their thing, they're going to be really, really upset because that's why, really they, upset. you know, that's so why they're on there, right? That's that's why they're on the celebrities just don't come on a talk show just because they want to have a good time. Right. They come what's, on Joe talk Coy, what's Joe Coy promoting? Um, Joe um, Coy, are you going to remember to tell him? Kim Whitley. Oh, yeah, he needs to call you. you. Yeah. I'm telling him he needs to call you. That you've been trying to get in touch with him. And it was and also it was about David Arnold. He needs to call you. I absolutely will. I'll say it on the air. Don't forget to call Kim Whitley, Joe Coy. <laughs> guess who coming up with guess who we're gonna get on? And you gotta come. I was thinking if we wanted to co-interview him, but I'm scared your behind gonna act up and act a fool. You gotta make oh! a guess. You gotta you gotta guess. You gotta guess. Oh, come Kim. on, this is ridiculous. Sherry, don't make her guess. She get an issue, she get irritable. It's That's funny why. though. <laughs> it, look, let me give you a hint. It ain't nobody that you sexually. Ooh, I don't want to say that. Okay. Uh, but no, you know, she knows. I'm not sexually attracted to anybody. Sherry, remember? I have an issue. <laughs> taking a turn for the interesting. Sexually attracted to anybody. <laughs> I said taking a turn for the interesting. What did Chris say? Taking a turn for the interesting one. I said, I'm not attracted to anyone. I That's have libido issues. That's not true. That you're not attracted to me. You're just Chris. tired. Yeah, hmm. I'm tired. What you're can... tired. Not true. Chris, I'm still attracted to you. <laughs> nice. Nice crazy. consolation there, huh, Sherry? She's like, I got to work with this guy. He's got some cool things in the pipe. I got to at least be nice to him a little bit. Well, I like Chris. I like She's you. Tired. Yeah, we're buddies. I don't like a lot of people. So who? So okay, give me a hint. Are they black or white? Black, bald, mm -hmm. light skin. Common? No. What? <laughs> I don't know who's. Yeah, I think I do know who Kim's attracted to. 
why on earth would you interview Common with me? You're funny. Hey, boo. Shamar Relax. Moore. Shamar. But Shamar wasn't used to be bald headed. No. Okay. I just said the clue. Hey, boo. Oh my God. Tom Joyner is coming on the Sherry Show. Is it going to be during my hiatus or something or in December? Or when is it going to be? I don't think we've told him yet. <laughs> okay. Well, it can't be while I'm working. You always working, Kim. No, we're going to make this. No, it's not fair. No, I swear. Tom, let Tom Jordan come on the show and see if I don't ring your phone in the middle of your show. Ring. He is doing his last uh, Fantastic Voyage. Oh. Oh, this is great promotion for that. He is doing his last Fantastic Voyage cruise either in March or May. I think it's May. Wait, the I didn't ship, know this was the last one. Oh, I'm going then. I want to go. This, well, you know, it's changed now. You can't be bringing 12 people like you used to, Kim. You know, it's Why different. Because they changed oh. it, remember? That's Tom Joyner. So the last, uh, uh, it's almost 80% sold out. Right, and Stevie Wonder's supposed to be coming on. I don't know if I'm and supposed your to say friend that. Stevie is coming on with his wife, Tamika. Yep, Tamika. And, Steve and I want to go too. Behind. I want to go too. Uh, oh. But I want to get him on for Black History Month. I'll be off work by then. You will? Because I thought it'd be so fun for both of us to sit on the couch and interview Tom. And I'd be like, who's your favorite Tom? And we could actually, it'd be fun to give him a gift. But what could we get him? Some tequila? Yeah, it'd have to be, we'd have to get it straight from Cuba. Yep, we'd have to give him some tequila. I don't, I don't think Cuba. they do Cuba and tequila. They do or rum, you know what we Asia. could do? What? He would uh -huh. really like a pole dancer. I'm not bringing up what on the I show. Didn't say a sexy one. Yeah. Well, you say you didn't say a sexy one. Well, who did you say? No, not like like a not like a stripper or actual pole dancer. He'd like that. I don't know. How I can make it work in daytime. Okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a nighttime thing for us to do for him. Yeah. But I think daytime. What'd you say about tequila in Cuba, Chris? I, I said that. common. That was hilarious. I, I could be wrong. I can look it up. I, I think Cuba's more where they make rum. They make tequila in, in Mexico, typically. Oh, a, well, what did he get from Cuba? He got all these barrels from Cuba. Probably no, rum. Yeah, I could be wrong. Was, uh, it wasn't Cuba where he got the tequila barrels, was it? Yeah, it was Cuba. When they opened oh. it up and started, you could get liquor, it was Cuba. Oh, that's where he went? Oh. He, he had all these, literally, these barrels. It could have been rum. I'd have to ask where no, to find out. Yeah, Cuba has no tequila, but it would. Yeah, I remember it came from Cuba. We have to ask. Um... It's probably rum. No, it's rum. absolutely. He doesn't drink he doesn't rum. Drink tequila. Tequila. Maybe it was Venezuela. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm ask uh, Angela. We have to ask Angela. So yes. I will keep you up to date. Uh, Black History, we're looking for guests because we got three. We got one slot open. For Black History oh, Month, if you have any you. suggestions. Tom, Jordan, and the questions, let me help you with your questions, or my questions too. Tell us about your run with the Commodores. You were in the group and then you weren't. Yes, absolutely. Why did Lionel Richie kick you out the Commodores? <laughs> Who he's very good friends with to this day. Yes. It's some funny stuff. Oh, that's I said it would be just a lot of fun. It'd be a fun six to seven minute interview then propping his, the, the crews. I just want to know, are the regular cast there? Would it be Huggy and um, Chris Paul? Would it be Damon Williams? Sybil. Sybil. Would it be Sybil? Would it be, like if the whole gang comes, I really want to go. And when we do, and when we do the masquerade ball, remember we did the parade? Yeah. Yes. yeah. We could always do a masquerade ball. When I tell you, if y'all have never gone on a fantastic voyage cruise, this is the last one Tom is going to throw. I would say run and try to get a cabin. Run, save your coins. 
I'm trying yes. to think now, who are my friends that were like, they got to go, they got to go. You're right, it is different. I probably won't be able to take them. I think- Yeah, you know, it's different. You know we probably have to prove to you, Kim. <laughs> That's how different it is. Um, it is a party with a purpose. That's what Tom always calls yeah. it. A party with a purpose. And I'm telling you, from the moment you get up, to the time yeah. you go to bed at two o'clock in the morning, he has something for you to do. He has a band. If you like hip hop, he got hip hop artists. If you like jazz, he got jazz. If you like big band groups, he got the Commodores or Frankie Beverly and Mays. He's got yeah. old school. He's got R&B. He's got Sherelle. He's let the music play. She won't get um, away. He got gospel. That's, Remember in the morning? He got gospel. He got gospel. Every morning is gospel. He got workout every morning. I work out the uh, or the workout. Was wine good. and sip, uh, art classes. He got fine art, black art. He got oh, right. double auction. Touch. That's right. The auctions. He has financial class. He's yeah, got a financial. parade. Home Depot. Remember, Home Depot's always giving a class on how to build something. Home, Home Depot. They give away a car to the HBCUs. Um, it is literally, if you like nasty comedy, they got comedy after dark. If you like gospel comedy, they got yep. the Christian comics. If you like uh, family comedy, they got all kinds of comedy and they got celebrities galore who come and are a part of it and, and nonstop food, nonstop entertainment. They got uh, theme nights where you were all white. They got theme nights where you wear your pajamas. They got theme nights. Um, oh, oh, oh my God. Slogan night. They have all kind of, because every night's a, a different theme. And you every night is it's always theme. in the evening. Uh, remember uh, uh, after five, uh, evening. Uh, the evening, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Mardi Gras night. They, yeah. they stop at the different islands and they have all kinds of games that they play. It is so much fun. One time Ice Cube was on. Then Diana Ross was there. Diana Ross then, came on. That was crazy. Diana Ross yeah. came on. The, Jennifer Hudson was there. It was uh, Tony Terry, like that whole crowd. Yeah. It was think, all uh, of the R&B. It's the only one ain't been on. It this was Earth, Wind, and Fire. Come Function yeah. was on there. Oh, Kim, my God. You know what? This is what's so crazy. Kim, K-E-M, started on the Tom Jordan cruise. He was not popular. He started in the small room upstairs in the jazz room. It might fit 150 people, 200. Kim got so popular. Of course, now he's on the main stage. But to see when we first started the cruise back in the day, it was just like, I was, was going to go up and see this jazz, this dude that like, sings like Al Jarreau, kind of. And now he be selling out, dog. Yeah. On the oh, so my exciting. God. You I went was on tour with him. Today. Even, though, even though I was his friend. Since well, you then. better call him because he back on tour with uh he back on tour with Music Soul Child and um is it Jill Scott Music Soul Child and somebody oh. else. that's the tour out shoot I right, love that's Music a good one. Child. he going back out on tour girl and oh, look um, at him. I love call him. him but it it's like this cruise it, it's seven days and when you get off the cruise people look like zombies. When they would leave that ship after the seventh day, because it oh, was all it. never went to sleep. It never went to sleep, especially the first timers. I tell you, try to tell people this. Is where all if you're just tuning in, we're talking about the Tom Jordan uh, cruise. But let me tell you something. We used to tell people, pace yourself. I remember when Amy came on the cruise the first time. They didn't believe me. I said, y'all, slow down. You got to pace yourself. I said, by day three, you're not gonna make it. I got a picture of her laid out on the bed in the daytime like this. I said, pace yourself. Because they go crazy. You get on this ship and you go crazy. When I tell you my best night, because, you know, late at night you go eating because they got everything to eat late at night, which I wouldn't be able to do now. I'll be so sick. But I met Cool Modi. He was eating too, Kim. And I said... Are you cool, Modi? And he said, Yeah, you Sherry Shepherd. And I was like, Oh my gosh. When I tell you cool, Modi, and he wishes me a happy birthday every year, um, cool, Modi and I talked for about three or four hours. What? Big Daddy Kane was there. He said he loved me and you. 
Big oh, Daddy Big Daddy came and his wife. Girl, it was just like, oh my God, rolling down 29th Street. Uh uh. Everything upbeat. Yeah, nah. It was like, <sighs> that is the cruise to be on the Fantastic Voyage cruise. With Tom Jordan, was that your day? And I remember we played double dutch. They have aerobics in the morning, they have Pilates, massages, and they have a double dutch contest that Myra J um, was the MC for. And can I tell you, Kim, I, I can jump double dutch. I'm from Chicago, and I was I had to beat a hundred jump ups in the air, and I got to 98, and my uterus was like, bitch. Because it was because it was jumping around. Yeah, say so you jumping. It's that hard impact. I didn't Dang. win. I had to stop. And I met somebody who played. You remember when I met that guy? I didn't know he was married. He played yep. for Confunction. Yeah, I was so in love. I'm not gonna say which, but uh, yeah. I'm not because gonna say what men, it's like. Because the men, right? Because the men come on there and they having a good time and they don't tell you you married because they on a cruise. But you know, it happens. I fell in he love was several so times. Fine. Girl, when I tell you he was so fine, and I remember going and sitting in the front row, hoping he would be playing that instrument and come over and see me. And he did. And he winked. And I was like, oh my God. I was such a groupie. And we talked, I think it was for like two days on that daggone thing. And I told John I didn't met him. Oh my gosh. He played for Confunction or whatever band he was with. And Sean, Sean was like, is this him? And it was a picture from his Facebook page to him and his wife. I was like, well, I'll be darned. Hmm. They have no ring on his finger. Cause right. I look. They don't wear their rings on the cruise. They don't so wear the ring. About the time during the cruise, y'all, there's only a few spots left. If you want to get on this cruise in March or April, May, go uh, to a fantastic voyage 2023. Three. Yeah, and, and sign up and get your tickets. Yeah, it's it was, I mean, and look, even despite that, I have fun, uh, uh. I had a good time too, like pajama night. It might as well night. Remember might as well well, night. Night, well, night. Might as might as well night. That that one right there, that night. That means might as well. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, oh yes. my God. You know what I got to talk about before we forget, speaking of artists, um, uh, I sent it to Chris because I didn't get a chance to really. Hey, you want me read to read it? it? Uh, yes, but tell him who it is, our girl, um, uh, Tamala Mann, uh, one of our friends, uh, is up for an American Music Award. Go ahead, take it, Chris. Oh, uh, here's the message. Hey, fam, I need your help. I have been nominated for American Music Award Favorite Gospel Artist. I need you all to vote. <laughs> Can vote up to 22 times a day, open to November 14th. I need your vote. Post and repost this, okay? Tell somebody, love y'all, need your help. I love you. Tell somebody, love to, hey, family, I need you. So that's it. Okay, this is, uh, I think you sent it three times. Sorry. So this is, no you can vote way. 20. No way I didn't. No, no, I didn't. It's, well, maybe she did. So here we go. So again, you can vote for for Tam, uh, and, November. And you can go to vote, A-M-A-S. Dot com. It's both in this uh, capital A, capital M, capital A, S, small s, dot com. And oh man, yes, I we guess. Here we go. Take me to the king. Yeah, the I'm it's the American Music that. Awards, Kim? Yeah, it is the uh, American Music Awards. Beautiful. So, don't have much to bring. Yeah, that was, that was the song. And she had a new song out that's hot. Take me to the king. It's my I, I, remember, I used to sing her song, Take Me to the King, and I used to be like, Take me to Burger King. <laughs> I have something to bring. <laughs> two two yeah. questions for you, Kim. Uh huh. You're tired, and I think there's two reasons. Sherry, she's been teasing this project she's working on. But check out the T-shirt. What's the T-shirt about? What have you been doing all day today? Oh, it should be over by the time we talk about this. But I've been out campaigning for Karen Bass in Los Angeles, be the first black female mayor in Los Angeles. All this weekend, we were all on the bus. Uh, your girl, and I wanted to ask her so bad, but I didn't share. I saw Kira you. Sedgwick. Oh, oh, Kira was campaigning? 
Oh, fa- oh, I got to tell yes. Karen. I guess she knows that. You know, uh, 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 what is wrong with me? I, what is wrong with me? But you know, it was me, Ariva Martin, Yvette Nicole Brown today. Yvette showed up, but me, Ariva Martin, and um, I am tired. What's our girl? Uh, so, Are oh, we- right. No, no, no. You asked to go to her party and she said no, the Oscar party. I asked to go to somebody's party and they said no. Oh, you want a man of skills? Because she has this private party, but if you ain't nominated, you ain't supposed to go. Oh, Alfred Woodard. Yes. Alfred Woodard. I asked her too. I asked her too. I said, I want to come to your party. Because I wanted to say, she was tight. She didn't say nothing, but we just had a fun on the bus. And she's really good friends with Karen Bass. And I was like, Alfred, let me come to your party. Why you don't let nobody come to your party? And what'd she say? She's, you know, she's like, yeah, you know, it's a party for some people, special people. That I mean, you know. ain't coming to my party. <laughs> now, one time, as we were on the bus for two days together, not once did she say, Kim, you can come to my party. I'm going to make sure you come to my party. So we were on a double-decker bus, right? So that means the top is open, right? We campaigning. We running down all over Los Angeles, right? Girl, we on top of the bus. They go on the freeway. I tell you, I was on the bus like this on the freeway. I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. When I tell you my wig, <laughs> the wind was blowing. Karen Bass was laughing. I was, looking, I was like, you got an afro. You don't know nothing about this. Girl, this wig was. Did people recognize you on the freeway? Oh, no. I was ducking down low. I was with the, uh, sitting next to uh, Mayor Gar, not Mayor, uh, Villa, Ro- Villa got it. Villa, Villa Rosa, Villa, our Villa last Villa. mayor, Villa Villa, <laughs> Villa, Villa, Rosa. Villa, so Villa Ragosa, Villa Ragosa, with his cute self, he was sitting next to me. We were having a good time. A bunch of council people and everybody was on there. It was fun. Well, I didn't get to do it. I just had a little absentee. Oh, battle. that's why right. they forgot. I forgot to ask you. Can you FedEx your ballot in so I can drop it off for you? You still why registered I, here. Why do I have to FedEx it when it was mailed? Oh, you mailed it for real? Kim. Sherry. Kim. You, you cast your vote, Sherry? This is an important one. I got to an... tell her. I apologize there because I told Karen, I said, Sherry went to New York. She probably didn't get her ballot. I said, she probably didn't cast a vote, but she, her driver's license is still in LA. They now, sent everything to me. They sent everything to me. Okay. I'm going to tell can't you. Can't do much. That. Can't stump. I can't tell nobody here to vote for Karen Bass. <laughs> right. Well, I appreciate it. We'll I see what I happens. Never part of the Deltas. You do so much community service. It's crazy. You know what? Look, I do do, I too do too much community service. But, but remember, I told you I'm still mad at Fisk University. So I don't do nothing for them no more. That's Why? Delta. Why? Why? My Delta bracelets. It's your Delta. I got. I told you they did a big old, big old campaign about all the famous people that went to Fisk, and they Morgan Freeman voiced it, and it was a video. They sent it out. People called the school, and everybody was like, "Hey, hey, you all forgot Kim Whitley, because everybody else on this video is dead." <laughs> you go. They're like, Kim Whitley, what, what is wrong with y'all? Which is fine. I don't mind, but they'd have been like, you know what? We're sorry. We made a mistake. But I'm not going to say his name, but the dude who was head of the board, the president of the board of Fisk, I emailed everybody and I said, you know, as much as I do for Fisk and been doing for Fisk, there was an oversight because all you had to do is they were like, the such and such, the such and such, the, the poet, the blah, blah, blah. They put Mookie Betts' mother on there. Uh, he's a baseball player. But that's his mama, but that's fine. You know, the, the baseball player's mother, the da da da. And all they had to do is say, and the comic completely forgot me. Uh, my boy, Terrence Heard, you know, he's all advocate for Fist. And he was like, You all forgot Kim Whitley. How can you forget Kim Whitley? Baby, the president of the board sent me back a nasty little email. Honey. Ooh. Yes, he sent me back, like, Well, uh, sorry, we missed you. It was an oversight. Good luck. Some, it, was, it was worse than that. Let me tell you something, and not against Fisk, but let me tell you, I don't do any more game shows for Fisk. I, I don't send any more big checks. I don't tell my celebrity friends to send any more checks. I don't mention it. I'm mad at Fisk, and I know people are like, don't do that, Kim. The school, you know, I haven't been back. 
Yeah, until he either uh, resigns or is gone or whatever happens. I was like, nope, but as soon as he leaves the board, I'll be back. How rude of him. Wasn't that, wasn't that rude? What did you do for Fisk University? How rude. He was rude. So, you is know, no, he, he didn't, he didn't have to there... say nothing. If he'd have just said, hey, it was an oversight or whatever. Sorry. You know, we're sorry. Uh, we really apologize. Something instead of being nasty about it, I was like, okay, that's why the school be having problems. Oh um, yeah, if you got this kind of attitude, a pride thing, like, is there an email that we could write, or do you want us to write a letter to him? Oh, you appointment. You just unleashed thirty thousand people. Oh, you got the rat. Kind of send. Kind of send fit. You're gonna get Fisk. Don't. What do you? Have what do you want the wrath to do, kid? Don't dox, don't dox this university. This is a you want, you like Denzel. Like you like Denzel. What do you like this? Oh, I love that. <laughs> Which what, what, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? Wait, how you do that? Something it's like a, a, it's a yeah up. That's it. Oh, that's cute. What's that mean? So when you it was well, he was telling them to turn and go. When oh, when he was doing, oh, when he was, uh, 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 um, oh, that was a good movie. Malcolm X. Malcolm X. When he had all of the men and he said this way and they turned and marched off. So what you want to do with the raft? Because you got the raft stirred up. You need to write an email? Do we need to do a phone call? No, but you know, we'll do maybe on the show one day, we'll show the video. And maybe we'll find a little email to email the man. What if? But it's it's not that important anymore. What if we made our own? What if we made our own Kim Whitley Fisk video? That would be good. Oh, look at it! Why don't you make a whole Fisk video with Kim Whitley, starring Kim Whitley? That's what I'm saying. But it's all, it's only have, Kim. I need Morgan Freeman to voice it for me. That's the problem. Morgan Freeman voiced the whole video. Now when okay. I see Morgan, he doesn't, Morgan Freeman doesn't mean no, I go to Fizz. I went to Fizz, Morgan. Okay, now you know if you're going to involve Morgan, you got to have a good reason. I tried to take a picture of Morgan Freeman when he was eating. And he was like, I tried to get a picture of him and somebody else. And he was eating. He, he looked up and he said, Sherry, really? I never talked to Morgan Freeman after that. I'm scared. Oh, yeah, Morgan don't be playing. But more, we talked to him in the wax museum. Well, that, well, maybe we can get the wax figure. Kim. <laughs> The voice. I'm, I'm delirious. How about how about this, Sherry? You sent me a photo. Would you like to see that photo? Yes. Guess it. Look at this photo. This is one of my dreams. Look at this photo. You know who that is? Oh, that's him. That's um who you just interviewed. His name is um. <laughs> this is hilarious. Did Come you on, fall asleep? It's Method Man. You you that's okay? That's you were seriously auntie. Yeah, yeah, that's so and so. His name is uh. <laughs> that's uh, that's method man. That's that's when you was doing the Mary J. Blige bit, and it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. That's method man. TikTok. You were good. Camp. TikTok, TikTok. That's what it was. Fifty-one on. years old. He been method married. Method man is cute. Twenty-one years happily married. Is he? Kim, stop Kim? it. Huh? Yes, Morgan, Kim. I, I don't believe that. You no, know, I thought was sexy. He had a reading glasses, Kim. No, Method Man is so nice, and I don't know his wife, but I'm sure they're happy. I'm just over here being bitter. There is, there is one Kim. There is one. That's all you need is one. You don't need a lot. I don't. Just, need, mm -mm, just one. Just one. Just one, one good one. One good one. <clears throat> Chris. Oh, he's sleepy. There was something I wanted to say, but I don't need to say it. What? Go ahead. I don't know what I was going to say, but uh, this show is going to air Thursday. On Friday, Gabriel Iglesias is coming by uh, for my, my, uh, he, yes. Huh? Gravy, oh, Gabriel, Gabriel, you tell him I said hello too. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I forgot to tell you. I worked with George Lopez for his show, Lopez yes. versus Lopez, on NBC on Friday nights. Caroline was actually in the pilot. Y'all got to watch that show. Uh, but I did the premiere. He had a premiere, and I did the comedy show. I headlined the comedy show. 
girl, and I thought about you on that stage. I didn't have a bobby pin in my wig, and we were on the rooftop, and that wind blew, girl, I caught my wig. Just I said, oh, I was like, that damn Charity Shepherd. I always yell at her, and there it goes. Before we go, watch the Lopez versus Lopez is with his daughter Mayan uh, on uh, NBC, I believe. I want to tell you, I fell down the stairs, a flight what? of stairs. What? Last week. My head got swollen back here. Uh, I On my booty, I skinned the skin off my butt. Uh, I got a bruise on my wrist. You want to know why? Don't. Why? I'm nervous. 19 stairs I fell down. And all I kept thinking when I was falling was, please don't let me bust this uh, fruit basket. Oh. I was walking down the stairs, that big ass fruit basket. Oh no, no. It was sitting here on the bed. And I said, Oh, let me get it because I don't want it to go bad. Cause Kim gave it to me. Sherry, you being real ungrateful with this fruit basket. I, you take uh, that fruit basket down the stairs and you eat that fruit and be grateful that God blessed you with a, such a friend. So the thing about it, Chris, the fruit basket is uneven in the weight distribution. <laughs> You got, the, right you got the here. mangoes on one side and, and the kumquats yeah, on the other. Of the grapefruit, so it's heavy. So because it was uneven in the weight distribution and I couldn't see the stair, all I remember with this fruit basket was, ah! And it was like three in the morning. Jeffrey didn't wake up and what? I'm screaming. Wait a minute, so, wait a minute. I, Why I, were you carrying that fruit basket down the steps at three in the morning? I didn't want to order no Hershey's Kisses. I said, I'm going to eat this okay. apple. My head literally was like this, boom, 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 on each stair. And I screamed and I said, oh, don't break the gift basket, the fruit basket. And please don't break no wrist. That thing skin, the skin off my booty. I am growing new skin. Head is swollen. Did you go to the hospital? No, I didn't. It had, it had little swollen bumps on it. They gone down. Oh, it was so sore. Because, and I said, the moment I became grateful over that fruit basket, I fell down the stairs, which showed me I was right in not being grateful for the fruit basket. <sighs> so I just wanted to let you know that. I think the kumquat got smashed, but I saved the papaya, the apples, the grapefruit, the jelly. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Not to, 19 stairs I fell down, carpeted. I can't, believe, I can't believe you can go to the hospital. No, I didn't go to the hospital, you know, because last night a fruit basket saved my life from a broken arm. <laughs> fruit basket saved my life. <laughs> Wait, Sherry, our comedy show, what are we doing? Our comedy oh, no, show. I mean, I'm sorry. You got, no, if not... you're talking your comedy show, I have three del three days held at a theater. I've got Caroline Ray that wants to come here and work with you all are, you're just, as soon as I know Sherry's schedule. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do our first date is going to be in St. Louis. We're going to do our first date oh, in wait. St. Louis. St. Louis. And Chris, do you have a comedy show you're doing? Yes, I do. I have a photo. Sherry, I was showing you that. You mind if I pop that up? Not with me and Sherry. Yeah, yeah. No, no. This is our weekly, uh, our weekly show. I mentioned that you all raised money for Precious, who was in that terrible yes. car wreck. This was the show. This is our first night. Thank you to everybody for coming out. Look at that. Packed house. Oh, look at your hair. But <laughs> that's all she sees. <laughs> it's every week. Yeah. So shout out to uh, Larry Green, Precious J, Will okay. O'Donnell, and uh, Ray Rowry. But great crowd. You can't see uh, everybody that was in there, but we had a blast. And uh, we do them every week. Mid-Coast Comedy Series every week, every Thursday wow, at Central did you, Stage. Did you host it? Yeah, yeah. I, I produce them and host them and our team is it's really fun. It's like a, it's a really good room. So, you know, maybe in the future that'll be something you all can do. But it's a hundred seater, packed, nice lights, great sound. It's one of those you all will both appreciate it. Well, this is cool. Um we So yeah, Precious was on it though. So that's the one to my right who you all helped. Yes, look at Precious's hair. <laughs> that's probably what saved her in that day gone car accident. Yeah. Hair. That's what you need some hair for. Shoot. Because I had my natural hair on. It didn't save me from falling down the stairs. <laughs> right. From the attack me of the either. fruit basket. <laughs> I mean, can you really... <laughs> Sherry, can you really call it health food when it tried to take you out like that? I mean, it's... <laughs> I, 
<laughs> should have got those kisses. Oh my gosh. Uh, I wish somebody, I was holding I the, the, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody sent me some pictures. I forgot right before he had to speak, Villa Garosa. How you say it? The Villa. Villa. Actually, I believe he made up the name. No. It's Villa Gar I'm pretty sure it's a made up name. You know Spanish? Um, I can look it up. I think there's a story behind it. It's like a mix it's of Polish, Kim. No, <laughs> there is. I could be way wrong, so I don't want to say that. He handed me his jacket. Via Ragosa. Via Ragosa. He was like, "Can you hold my jacket for me?" I said, "Show, sure, Daddy." He looks like what? Ah! <laughs> you call him Daddy. He you ain't the man that. no more. I can say you that. Monique, Daddy. Daddy. I don't like women when women call men daddy. That's weird. Depends on when you say it and how you no, say it. There's no, when you say it and how you say it. Daddy means your father. And okay. I understand. Hey, baby, you don't like when a man says, hey, mama, hey, pretty mama. You don't like that? No. You like auntie? Hey, pretty auntie. I don't like nobody referring to me sexually with auntie or mama. I do like, uh, I like anything with little in front of it. Little mama, little grandmama. I like little little mama. Mama. Can I, can I say something I saw the other night? I, I'm yeah. uh, rewatching Curb Your Enthusiasm and my favorite episode popped on. And you say little in that day. That is, if that's not proof, if that's not proof that that show is improvised, I don't know what is because I picked up on all these things that you say normally. You said ratchet. You said little. You said, oh, so funny watching it after knowing you. You know, that's seriously one of the oh, better Curb episodes hilarious. ever. Yeah. Because then you know that's really me speaking. Yeah. I said little. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There is, uh, I want to, wait, Chris, and I'm going to send it to you. Um, we got to wish Cheryl Underwood, she lost 90, yep. she lost 95 pounds. And I'm going to send you the picture. She looks amazing. If you could pop it up before me and Kim fall asleep. She does look good. Oh my gosh, she looks amazing. I'm going to send it to you. Uh, by the way, just to clarify, I don't, care or know or anything but for some reason i knew this so via ragosa changed his name he was actually villar was his last name changed what? his name upon it was he was in oh, that sounds yugoslavian villar no <laughs> he he changed his name upon his marriage with karina ragosa in 1987 so he changed it to villar ragosa via yeah. ragosa how, how is it villar ragosa yeah, there you he go. changed the Via Rigosa. There it is. Kim. Oh, it's better. He changed it's... the Via Rigosa. All right, I'm getting these photos. Just show it. Cheryl Underwood, Kim, lost 95 pounds. Wow. Um, and Try she looks That's incredible. really good. I lost five pounds in 30 days. I did it slow. I've been doing it slow. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, five, five pounds in 30 days. Yes, sorry. 30 days. I know you didn't think I said 30 pounds in five days. That sounds like that's not slow. That's, that's <laughs> going to kill you. No, I lost five pounds in 30 days because I've been doing it slow. This is my fourth week, no chocolate, Kim. That uh, might trigger something. Careful. Who what? We both fade. This is hilarious, you know, actually. I don't I, <laughs> you know. I'm trying this my is silence on the podcast. Right. We have lost Kim Whitley. I'm telling you this now. I'm one eye is drooping. She got the one eye drooping that her hair is over. Yeah. Did you memorize your script for tomorrow? No, I just called Pam right now. I was like, we want to Zoom. So, you know, tomorrow I do press. So, I'm not even, so I'm going to miss a whole studio day of rehearsal. So I need Press to go for the Kim podcast. I got to go do the talk, access Hollywood to promote Kim. She's asking. So I miss, wait, what was she asking? Go ahead, Sherry. Sorry. Mm -hmm, you got to do all that promotion for, for Kim the Audible. 
so you're missing a day of work. You'll be able to get it. You been you in the groove now. Your muscle is there. Yeah. So you'll be able to get it. This is gonna be oh, a little yeah. hard. But this is good. You get to you get a fresh promotion, which is really really great. Promoting Kim. Uh, uh you're gonna um. Damn, we are. This is a whole other is, And I'm we doing photo. Make, I can't even throw out we questions. We should this one for the NAACP Image Awards. Yeah, we got to win another one of those. I don't know what we're going to use. Shoot. We ain't been functioning properly. <laughs> we have to submit one to Caroline Ray and Judine did. Yeah, we'll put the oh, one with Andre good. and Caroline. I'm telling you. Cause why, we, is, we, why is this white dude in this clip? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, here you go. He's still waiting on because he's still waiting on his award. Look that's at Cheryl true. Underwood, Kim. Look at that's was for Halloween. Oh, I never saw this, but that is not Cheryl. That's Cheryl Underwood. When did she take this picture? Hold up. Let me take a picture of this picture. We I will send was, it to you. Yeah, I will send it to you. Damn. You gotta take a picture of the picture. Wait, I'm just sending it. Put your face in it, Sherry. Put your face in it. Put your face in it. I'm gonna send it to him and be like, okay. So you'll see yes, um, the picture. Yeah, that was for Halloween. And she lost 95 pounds and she looks amazing. She said for the first, she hasn't been able to do this in 25 or 30 years. She was excited because she got to cross her legs. Wow. And I was very happy for her. So we wish uh, her and Lonnie love. Lonnie's lost like 35 pounds, I think. Uh huh. People are doing it, you know, they want to be healthy. And look at you lost weight. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. You haven't seen me. You lost weight. How am I gaining weight and everybody losing weight? Uh, Hershey's kisses. No, it's been four weeks, Kim, since you oh, told really? Jennifer Lewis. It's been four weeks. No Hershey's kisses. I've been fighting it. Fighting it. That's what I said. I only lost, I've lost five pounds. Five. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta drink the water, but you can't drink the water because you're on TV. Yeah, I drink, I drink uh, 33 ounces when I get up in the morning, and I'm peeing all day. That's what I gotta do, girl. This is the Carpenters Union. When I tell what? you, all these men came out and followed our buses around all day yesterday and day. Stop traffic, whatever the buses. They were security. They were everything. The Carpenters Union. I just want to give them a shout out. These men were unbelievable. Wow. They, they, they you were, didn't mean uh, nobody. You didn't mean nobody single? That's what Boutte was saying. I was like, all these men, but I didn't yell out, is anybody single? They was all nice to me. And Kim, that's the saying, union. They got benefits and stuff. That's what I was thinking. Are you kidding I mean, me? I asked them to build me a shelf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a start. That's a start. It, it always starts with, can you build me a shelf? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you're oh. pregnant. <laughs> Do it all because on Jesus that. was a carpenter, and you know what they told me when I said that they said Jesus wasn't a carpenter; his daddy was. Oh, Boom. that's what they told me. So, do they got a daddy that's a carpenter in the union too? She'll call a carpenter daddy. She call a carpenter. Okay, I know we tired. All right, okay, smile for the too. smile for the people. Oh wow, Kim, we're gonna comb that. through your hair. Who was here today? <laughs> One more. Keep it going. Follow you know Kim I, I, hate about hair? Yeah. I look like uh, the African-American studies professor. That is my, yes, you do. That is, but it's, you know what? But she wouldn't have on them big hoop earrings. Yeah, she'd have on some yeah, African, African chocolate. <laughs> Big old necklace, big old necklace, yeah, 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 yeah. With some big old clackly, cackly, cackly bracelet, and some dark. Oh my god, brown. we are Chris. Chris, we got to end this podcast. We're losing it. Well, she said cackly, cackly, cackly. It's time to the go. Dark to brown, <laughs> my dark brown, Whoopi Goldberg lipstick. Yes, my African American <laughs> studies hair. Be sure to follow oh the ladies on Instagram. Check out the Sherry Show daily. <laughs> Check SherryShowTV.com for more information. Follow Kim on Instagram for all her news and everything else. Be sure to support Kim on Audible. We'll be back next week as we do this show each and every week, Thursdays. Two Funny Mamas. Bye, everybody. Bye. Going to bed. <laughs>
Bye, Chris. Bye, Sherry. Sherry, get some sleep. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.